Okay. All right. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are in the world. Thank you for joining us. Uh, my name is Darren Bardick. I'm in the marketing group here at Lightbend, and it's a pleasure to be with all of you. Thanks for joining. Thanks for your interest in Akka, uh, whether you're using the product already or you're exploring using it in the future. Uh, we're here today to talk about our exciting 2405 release and the highlights of it. Um, if any of you don't understand the, what 2405 is, that's simply the year and the month that we release um, a collection of capabilities that we release throughout the year. We usually have about two of these major releases every year. So these are highlights of things that we've done over the past couple of months, um, some really exciting capabilities that we have uh, quite a few people to um, communicate the information to you. I'm really excited to have our um, some of our leadership here with us. Um, Tyler Jewell is the CEO of Lightbend. Joined earlier this year, he's been on the board for Lightbend for quite a few years and been in this space for many years. Um, been CEO a few different times, and this is actually uh, his first session uh, communicating with all of you. So it's great to have you with us, Tyler. Um, Jonas uh, Bonet is our founder and CTO. Um, he started Akka um, back, he essentially invented it, initiated it uh, back in 2009 and has been associated with it ever since. So uh, Jonas will take us through a few of the things um, around the release. And also Michael Nash, our Chief Information Security Officer, he's with us to talk about um, one of the particular things that we've done around helping you to architect more secure applications and share a little bit what we do to make sure that uh, we are a compliant organization uh, with many things that we attest as, as far as uh, SOC 2 compliance and other things. So. Um, it's exciting to, to get this started. I'm going to hand it over to Tyler, but before I do that, just to uh, go through our agenda, um, Tyler's going to take us through a little bit of a business update. Uh, Nash will take us through what we've done around zero trust security and helping you to architect that in your applications. And then Tyler will uh, come back and talk about the exciting database sharding capabilities that have been added to the product. And then Jonas will take us through the, the rest of this list here, continuing on performance improvements around um, the Growl VM that helps with startup times, active active replication, and what we've done to extend those capabilities out to edge applications. Uh, and then continuing on with the edge, app, uh, the edge conversation around what we've done to make sure that it's compatible with Rust language for uh, very small uh, compute resources and, and footprint out at the edge. And then wrapping up with uh, what we're done with Java 21 and, and certifying support for that. We'll hold questions until the end, but if you do have questions that you wanna submit, go ahead and use the chat function in Zoom, and then we'll address those towards the end of the conversation. If anyone has anything urgent, uh, we'll be monitoring the chat function throughout and we'll address things if, if they really need to be done throughout the conversation. So uh, without further ado, I'm gonna hand it over to Tyler and he'll take us through a little bit of a business update and then get things rolling. Tyler, over to you. Thank you, Darren. Hello, everyone. Uh, it's really great to be here. I'm thrilled to be a part of this organization. Uh, Lightbend is the commercial company that supports ACA. And um, really, ACA is the foundation and the bedrock under which all of our business operations are built. And ACA started off as and continues to operate as an open source project. And its sustainable success is really critical and essential, not just to Lightbin's continued operations, but to the community at large. And so talking about the progress that we've made with ACA and the continued investment that we intend to put into it is important for all of us to understand the lifeline um, and the support uh, and the sustainability of the project um, on a global basis. Uh, we are you know, very thrilled to see that there's more than 10 million downloads per month of ACA. Uh, this is on a global basis with about 80% of that happening in North America and Europe and the rest through Asia Pacific. Over its lifespan, it's had more than 500 million total downloads since the beginning of time. This makes ACA the a, both a uh, the most widely adopted 
uh, distributed programming library, um, uh, you know, ever, ever conceived of. And it also establishes it as extremely proven, if you will, um, in that it's been used in well over 100,000 projects. Uh, those projects have uh, immense scale. Uh, we have customers who run 100 million concurrent uh, users with ACA. We have systems that are synchronizing state across hundreds of thousands of concurrent nodes in near real time. And we have streaming applications that are handling uh, millions of events per second uh, with deterministic latency. Uh, so it's really remarkable the extent and the range in which ACA has been used uh, around the world. Uh, we we are able to engage with the organizations that are uh, commercially adopting ACA, and there are fifteen thousand organizations that in, that are engaged with ACA um, in an, in an active way at any point in time. Uh, that that's a large number of companies. Uh, people use ACA to build uh, not just uh, distributed systems, but really any sort of system where you want data or logic to be running closer to end users. And, um, and that involves all kinds of uh, interesting capabilities. You have to deal with uh, dealing with data state uh, and how it's going to be uh, clustered, replicated, and moved around the world. You have to deal with um, uh, uh, having responsive interactions with your end users on a on a sustainable and reliable way on a global basis, and you also have to deal with all kinds of uh, challenging remoting um, and communication issues, both of a synchronous and asynchronous nature, in order to build systems of this nature. So, ACA has really transitioned uh, increasingly from a library and a toolkit into more of a uh, a, a an emerging platform and set of best practices for how you build these sort of distributed systems. And we're just really thrilled to see that there's as many organizations that need to build systems of this sort of caliber and complexity. Um, on, a, on a business level of dollars and cents, the company itself, Lightbend, um, we grew 50% last year. And, you know, we were, we were pretty pleased to announce in our, our end of year results in February that we are now effectively cash flow positive. Uh, we're an organization of just under 70 people worldwide, uh, both technologists and phenomenal, uh, you know, phenomenal business professionals in support of the technology. And, and we anticipate to continue that growth for the next number of years and putting us on a trajectory where we can continue that reinvestment into uh, not just the ACA core libraries, uh, but into new platforms and services built around ACA as well. Um, uh, prior to getting into some of the new features in ACA, you know, uh, I think the community was aware that we had changed the license model of ACA itself about 20 months ago. This was in the September of 2022. ACA was originally an Apache licensed uh, software project, and we changed it to the BSL, which is the business source license in September of 2022. Uh, we did this primarily out of a motivation in that we were looking for a more sustainable way uh, that we could continue to invest in ACA um, and get a stronger form of contributions back from the commercial community uh, that were engaging in making successful use of the project, uh, while still creating a model where the vast majority of usage could be free um, or would expect it to be free. And so just real quick, uh, there's a lot of questions about how the BSL license works, and uh, we've prepared some notes here on it. And what the BSL says is that, you know, hey, there are a lot of free um, usage rights that come with the license. In particular, if you are in development or pre-production, you get free usage rights. If you are a commercial entity, university, nonprofit, or government entity, and your budget slash revenues are under $25 million a year, you get free usage rights. And if you're an open source project or a software vendor where you have to redistribute um, uh, your code embedded with ACA, you also get free usage rights with the BSL additional usage grant. And so uh, 
if you go, if you need usage rights or support that goes beyond those limits, then we have the light bin subscription. Uh, we can get you a variety of in legal indemnifications and protections that come with the code. Uh, these are IP um, uh, uh, and further uh, IP and other types of liability protections that come with the code, uh, along with our 24 seven support. And you can contact us if that's in development and pre-production, but in, in, we also give these subscriptions away for free. Um, if you are an organization under $25 million in revenues. And so, uh, you can come to us, you get a subscription and, in fact, there's actually been a huge portion of the startup community that has taken advantage of those free subscriptions, and we're well over a um, hundred ISVs that have signed up for that. And when you do sign up for that, uh, we will do a testimonial and use case about your implementation uh, to promote the work that you're doing, uh, whether it's the architecture or the type of business that you're building in and around ACA. And, and it's a great co-promotion co co opportunity. And if you happen to be an open source software project or an ISV that is distributing ACA um, and that ACA distribution is getting into your customer environments, uh, we can do OEM agreements. Uh, we've done a number of OEM agreements where we offer customer protections on behalf of the ISV so that you can get the redistribution rights. Um, one of the interesting things about the BSL is that 36 months after every release, it does convert to Apache V2. So it downgrades to the previous license uh, that we had prior to this conversion. And so the very first version that we did with this was in September of 22. And so in September of 2025, and you know, roughly like 16 or so months, uh, that version will automatically become Apache license. Um, and then you can get all the usage rights that, um, uh, that, that come along with that license type. We have done... Um, uh, th this is our fourth release since we did the BSL and this downgrading automatically at 36 months is designed to, uh, encourage us, the commercial company supporting ACA to continue an aggressive investment and innovation path in the product itself. Otherwise, um, uh, there, there will be no compelling reason for organizations to upgrade. There will be no compelling reason for organizations to offer a commercial relationship with us. And so this is a built-in way for the community to understand the level of investment that we have been piling into that. Um, and so uh, we're, we're excited by this business model change. It has uh, made the uh, health of our business on a more stable footing than what it was before. And you're going to see some articles coming out from us that really itemize uh, the reasoning behind why we made this change and, and for why organizations need to think about a commercial open source in this way as a, as a different kind of model than what, what had been there previously. Um, now, getting into some of the specifics about uh, all the things that we've added into the latest version of ACA, I'm going to hand it off to our CISO, uh, Mike Nash. And, and he's going to speak a bit about, one, how we build ACA and how we build ACA in a secure way. And then, two, the security features we've added into this ACA version for our customers as well. Thank you, Tyler. <clears throat> so as Tyler mentioned, we've invested in ACA and in, in also in ensuring we develop ACA in compliance with secure standards. So we've been SOC 2 certified for uh, some time and audited against that standard. And we've just added uh, right before the 2405 release compliance to the NIST cybersecurity framework. Uh, ACA is built in a secure and certified environment with validated processes. Also related to security, but more specific to your implementation, there are specific features in the new release that help you build your applications uh, to be secure and resilient. In today's security environment, many organizations are looking at the zero trust architecture and principles of zero trust to further reduce risk, to be able to make their applications resilient and secure. ACA lends itself very well to such systems. And in this latest release, we've improved the support even further. Specifically, ACA applications can operate with no reliance on implied authorization, that is within a firewall, 
They, it doesn't matter what their network environment is, and it's very easy to encrypt all of the traffic uh, within both for data in motion and data at rest to en enable a completely zero trust style and architecture. ACA supports mutual transport level security, of course, as well as secure HTTP and gRPC communication between services, supporting both client and server certificates. ACA's database access, so data at rest, also supports client certificates and ser server certificates authorities uh, for securing your database access via MTLS as well for all of the different supported database types. A dynamic policy and authentication updates can be distributed throughout the application and credentials and keys can now be rotated as needed on a running system. This integrates fully incidentally with Kubernetes and Kubernetes Cert Manager. This gives you all of the ingredients you need in this release to truly build a zero trust application architecture, reducing your reliance on network protections and protecting against even internal attacks while maintaining the kind of flexibility you need and allowing, allowing dynamic adjustment and reconfiguration of security on the fly. The implementation details for all of this are of course in the ACA documentation and our professional services team can help you make full use of these features. Back to you, Tyler. One of the most exciting features that are part of this latest, latest release is a technology we call database sharding. And you know, for those of you who have been building ACA-based systems that are using actors that have entity persistence with clustering, um, when you design your entity, that entity historically has been uh, persisted through a single database, and there are multiple tables within that database. And our customers have been able to use relational databases or NoSQL databases like Cassandra or SiloDB as the backing persistence store on this. And so um, the performance of the overall system uh, to a certain degree is bounded by the right throughput of that single entity to that single database. Um, one of the capabilities that we've introduced is that you can now shard a single entity um, uh, and have different portions or effectively different records, quote unquote, records of that entity uh, written to actually different database instances. And you can have up to 1,024 database instances for a single entity type. And so um, since the rights on an entity are lock-free, append only, given the way the nature of event sourcing works, um, you get near maximum IOP throughput on the right persistence for a single entity. Um, uh, what happens here as a net result of this is one, you can ultimately increase your performance, your right throughput performance by up to a thousand times. Um, and we have uh, some performance benchmarks that we will be releasing uh, pretty shortly here that show with only a few database instances, you can get well over a million IOPS uh, per second, IOPS, per, this is per second, obviously we're talking about IOPS, um, uh, dealing with 5K uh, and 2.5K uh, byte sizes. Uh, and so a million operations per second is really a remarkable amount of performance, and that's only with a few database instances. Uh, so you can really scale this up to potentially hundreds of millions of writes per second, which is uh, Amazon scale. Uh, you can also map different entities into different sets of databases as well. And, and so uh, if you deal with a properly designed distributed system, uh, you're ultimately looking at uh, virtually infinite write throughput um, as long as you've got a compartmentalization of the entity design that you do at the beginning. That's, that's pretty remarkable, just purely on the performance basis. 
But oftentimes what you'll find is that if you just go to Amazon and take a look at their RDS instances, um, you can get, if you just take their most expensive RDS instance um, and look at the total IOPS that are available to you on that expensive instance, um, if you were to go and get 10 smaller instances that in aggregate gave you the same amount of IOPS, you're going to pay about 90% less on a monthly basis for the same amount of IOPS capability um, with 10 instance, 10 smaller instances than the one very large instance. So this sort of configuration also gives you the ability as an operator to dramatically lower your infrastructure costs without impacting performance as well. And uh, uh, this is something that we, we just released and, and we hope that a lot of organizations are gonna take advantage of. All right, and on to the next feature. Darren, thank you. Joe, sorry about sorry that. I was having trouble getting off mute. We've got a couple questions about the database sharding, but um, for the audience, we'll come back to those after we let Jonas talk through the couple, uh, the other couple of the things. So we'll come back to that. Sure. You, you hear me now? Yes. Cool. Yeah. So, so we have a bunch of exciting features, uh, and, you know, both for for cloud and and edge, and some of them are are, are blending. You know, in term, what I mean by that is that they they're very useful for both. Uh, we've been you know, you know, you know, we've been uh, we've been tinkering with with Graal VM for for about a year now and 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 uh, I'm really happy that 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 we finally can say that we have we have support for 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 uh, being able to create sort of, sort of Graal VM native images of your ACA application and and uh, why would you want to do that you know. So yeah, there are a bunch of different reasons, but but, but first, what does it do? It, yeah, it's it essentially you know take your Java and Scala code and 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 um, ahead of time, meaning when you build the system, you know you can compile it down to a native executable, meaning that it will run natively on the hardware itself, and 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 it's in, instead of having to run on a, on the JVM. You know we all love the JVM for many different reasons. But it has some 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 drawbacks, you know, and 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 uh, and Graalvm is really you know laser focused on on addressing three of the of the main issues here, that, you know, with the bulkiness of JVM. And the first one is is, is that it really lowers the memory footprint. Uh, it it allows you to run in way less uh, uh, way more resource constrained environments, you know. And 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 the, and this and the second thing is that it. It it you know the 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 binary that you compile down is a lot lot smaller so so you have way smaller de de deployments it's sort of more nimble and agile in that in that way, and another very interesting thing is is that you know Java has this always as like a like a warm up uh, period where you have to like hit it quite hard in order for for you know for for the JIT compiler to do it all this work etc. with the with the with the Graal VM native image you will get immediate in peak performance it will just you, you know run out of the gate uh, as fast as, as 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 possible and and all of these things are of course you know they're very very useful um on the in the cloud but 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 they there are probably even more useful as you move out to the edge where there are more resource constrained environments where where you know small deployments and 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 peak performance really really re really really matters. So so it really sets the stage for us to 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 tackle both cloud and edge in a, in a in a much more efficient way. So next slide. Uh, yeah yeah. Sp speaking about edge, uh, you know you know I, I we we have now. Sort of extended our active active entity replication, and so th there was a question about what an entity is, and I can just answer it just very quickly here. An entity is essentially an actor if you build systems with Akka, but it's an actor that is persistent, that is event sourced, 
and that is fully replicated and 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 um, and, and sort of lives in this in this data mesh that Aka uh, provides. Um, so 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 it's it's a lot more capabilities adding being added to an actor. You know that's why we call it an entity. Anyway, so so we shipped uh, you know active active entity replication about a year ago now in what we call Aka distributed cluster which has proven to be an, ama an amazingly useful feature for region to region replication, where you want to ensure redundancy across regions. Um, but it's always been, been, been created, you know, you know with, a, with, with, the, with the goal of having it to run, not just in the cloud, but very, very efficiently all the way out to, to, the, to, to the edge. And I'm, I'm really happy that in this, in, in this release, we have been enhancing it to, to run seamlessly from cloud to edge, you know, so you don't really have to care about where your uh, entities or actors are running. You know, it will, it, it can also, it can all fully take 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 advantage of the of the, of the full active active entity replication, and and it's it's uh, it's built on on event sourcing. You know, so so it, it requires your entities to be event sourced. But if if they do that, you know, we 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 allow you to do streaming projections over gRPC. It, it now also supports in this release. You know, uh, it, it wasn't. Uh, it, you know, it, it hasn't been been supported earlier. But we also added alongside event sourced entities also support for Akas durable entities, which is more key value like. So so we have full, full now full support for both for both of these. And and you know the way you sh the way you you should think about it is that is these are replica set of entities. Uh, you know. It, it's, it's essentially one logical microservice, and 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 one way of one good way of thinking about it when you're designing the system is 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 that it's essentially an, a bounded context in DDD, I mean domain-driven design terminal terminology, and 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 what this does for you is that it it really gives you a very powerful tool for redundancy and 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 for resilience to. To, since you're actually able able to sort of spread out, uh, you know, or, or actually, yeah, 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 you know, fully replicate and 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 make available and a single event log across multiple different nodes, you know, you know, and 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 you can put those those nodes as in regions, in pops, out on the edge. And and vice versa, or mix them all together, you know. But but it, but it gives a really really good good um, uh, feature set to tolerate failures. I mean, meaning the one node can go down, a whole a whole region can 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 go down, but you can still continue to serve your users and be fully operational. And this event log, you know, can actually accept multiple uh, writes at the at the same time. That's what active active means. So you're always having one one region or one one uh, sort of node, one rack that's always has the latest data and can always continue to to, to serve your customers as the rest of of, of the replicas fail. And another very important thing is is, is that we're able, now we're able to 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 serve requests closer. To where the end user is, you know, a lot of the things that we've been doing, or you know, the last two two years have been able to move data and processing in to the phys same physical location as the end user, and 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 the reason for that is is that of course, I mean, you will get a lot lower latency if you don't need to go all the way back to to the to the cloud or 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 elsewhere to your database to actually, I mean, your 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 cloud database to 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 get to get the data. Or to process the data, uh, so lo, lo, so you will get immense levels of, of low latency here. But it's also really really good for resilience. You know, this means that you know that that, that if you, if you if you have the data and the processing always at the same uh, physical location at, at at the end user, every, everything can really crash and burn all around you. You can lose the the, the, the connection to the backend cloud, and you can still always serve your customers because you have all data available and you have the processing power to 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 serve requests uh you know and uh, i've already talked about that that this allows us to serve entities uh, updates you know for for many different locations at the same time and it will always you know sort of magically go look at the code if you want to see how we do it but it's almost like magic you know all, all automatically always you know converge to the right uh, state of the event log. So next slide. 
So, 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 so now we're going into, into, into full edge land. You know, we, we've been working the last but nine months now, probably started last summer. It's almost a year now, actually, on this on this ACA edge rust implementation. And, and this I'm, 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 I'm super excited about that. It really allows you to run ACA natively on resource constrained devices. And and the way I think about it is, is there, is there an ACA edge client that we built? And we, and we chose Rust to, 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 build, to build it. Uh, simply because Rust is the most popular language for 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 embedded uh, uh, programming, and it's really, and it's especially for people building edge systems to today. Uh, uh, size wise, it might still be C, you know, but 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 Rust has proven itself to be an extremely uh, capable language to build these these type of of, of of applications and and it's and 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 it's it's you know this 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 Arch edge rust clients is is fully wasm enabled you know we've been we've been toying about even even running in in the browser etc i mean it's up to you how you how you would like to to use it but it's extremely flexible and and it and it it it, it really sort of completes the story of, of of this unified developer experience for you developers from cloud to edge and now all the way out to the to the device meaning that you can build actors uh, uh, sorry sorry build systems using an actor like programming model without having to switch between different tools the different libraries different ways of doing things but you, but but you can really so sort of rely on the aka component model you know the way the way things work in aka and its semantics and 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 be, and being and having to having that being stretched out all the way out to the device itself, and it's and our library here supports you know among many different things you know the full support for event sourcing you know streaming projections etc. And it's and it's um, it, it has an extremely small memory footprint, just as I mean, especially if, if you look at the JVM today. I mean, it, it really runs on four me megabytes of RAM, often smaller, but we put a limit that it it has to run nicely on four megabytes of RAM and it supports a, like a long range of, di of, of different architectures like ARM32, ARM64, x86, AMD64, RISC-5 and, and, and MIPS3. And uh, and it's uh, it, it's really, you know, fully baked, I think, you know, in terms of being fully durable, fully resilient and fully secure. You know, it, 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 it comes with its own local persistent storage so essentially you have you have durable event logging right on the device itself which means that it's fully recoverable after network and power disruptions and it's also have already baked in you know full security communication over, T, over TLS I mean we've been testing it over WireGuard etc I mean I'm, and this I'm I'm extremely excited about this it's it's in a way you know the the, the first step towards making ACA polyglot in a way even though I wouldn't say that it's a full baked implementation of ACA, that's not the intent. It's an it's an it's a way to ex extend the capabilities of ACA in the format of a of a client running running on the devices itself. Uh, so let us know what you think. Please please try it out and and give us feedback on it. Uh, next slide. And finally, you know it's it's. Uh, it's not a massive feature, but I think it really, really matters, you know, for you as developers. I mean, we 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 now have official support for 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 Java twenty one, and and it's and it's uh, it allows it it allows you know for people in Java to write simpler and more expressive code, uh, especially actor code, and 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 uh, and the most important features here, I think, is that it it's, it supports records, which was a new feature in Java twenty one. And and it it's it supports you know doing switch statements on those records, and if you if you, if as you can see in the in this in this in the slide here, I mean it looks if you if you come from Scala land, it it looks very very similar. In in Scala, we've been spoiled by having you know case classes for a very for a very for a very long time that are essentially Java records. But but now with the addition of of records in in Java, you can have you you have a really way, a concise way of of defining the the messages, uh, 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 and 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 you can also seal them, which means that you can that you can ensure. I mean, I don't know. If, I don't want. I don't want to go too too much into detail about about, about Java here, but. But 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 marking, you know, the the top level interface here, the command as sealed means that that. In the switch statement long below, 
you know, it will it will not accept any other messages than the ones that extend uh, this sealed interface command here now. So 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 you get so you, you 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 get a lot more type safety into the system here. But I think the most interesting thing thing here is is in the switch statement. Here you can see that that we actually do a switch on the actual records themselves on the on the on the on the types. And as we could have done in Java for a while, you know, we're now actually able to in this case statement, for example, case multiply here, you have an int A and int B that we're interested in, you know, the, the rest we're not interested in here, but you're able to sort of extract A and B automatically here and use it in the expression, you know, after uh, uh, this arrow here, you know, meaning in the logic that, that should uh, be executed if, in this case, then there is a multiply message. So, so um, you know, ju ju just think about what you had to do, you know, prior to to to, to the to that. You know, a lot of a lot of costing and 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 another and, and, and other type of of, of, um, of of messiness. You know, so so finally, I mean, I probably shouldn't say that, but finally, it feels like like Java being being, being catching up a little, little bit to Scala here, and I'm really happy to see to see that. So, that's it. Uh, for uh, for this update, any questions? That's great. Okay, thanks, Jonas. Thanks, Nash. Thanks, Tyler. So let's go ahead and open up for Q and A. We've got a few um, we've got a few queued up here. So let me start with this. Um, going back to the database sharding conversation, Jonas and Tyler. So um, the events of a single entity can be distributed over multiple databases. That's a that's a question. Is that can they be a, a single entity distributed over multiple databases? And, and what happens if parts of these databases are offline? Jonas, do you want to take that? Yeah, I mean, we, we shard entities, you know, to, to, to single databases, but, 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 but you run them in HA mode, you know? So, 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 so you know, the whole point is, 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 is to be able to truly shard them across multiple database inst instances and not having everything persisted everywhere. Uh, so, okay, good. And if anyone has a like a follow on question to any one of the answers, just go ahead and throw that in the Q and A. Uh, another one on the database sharding: does does each worker node create connection to each database instance when sharding? Yeah, this is something that we're actually working on and on 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 improving in optimization here. That that will, that that will that we're going to release very soon. Uh, in 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 which we we we'd be more you know. We be able to to understand you know which connections should be open and 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 uh, to be, to which databases to not to, to not exhaust the connection pool, uh, uh, which we which will give us even higher levels of scale, uh, you know, won't be on the one million over eight databases as you see today. But it's but it's 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 it's, it's working very well so far, but 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 we're always looking for new optimizations. So so this is something we're looking into. Okay, great. Mm -hmm. And then moving on, I believe to the the active active replication. Um, this is when this question showed up. I, the participant saw that it shows an event journal. Is it applicable to durable state? The active active replication. Yes, I mean event event the event journal in Akka is our source of truth. It's 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 not a cache. It's not it's not uh, it it is it, it is it is truly. The source of truth it means that you can rely on it in you know being uh, uh, you know your your only source of truth really and, and so 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 it, it is I don't know if you know how event sourcing works works in Akka but essentially it means that we're capturing each command you know, sort of sorry each event as it as 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 it's you know each each event replicates a state change and and instead of storing the actual result of that state change, like, like you do in regular databases, we actually store the event that led to the state change, which means that we have the whole history of everything that, that led up to the actual state at every single point in time. Uh, uh, so it, it actually does more than, than, than you would expect from a regular da da database. And that is how Akka is, 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 is getting its, its persistence, its, its, its uh, durableness. Uh, so uh, and so it's natural that that is what you know since that is sort of the the core uh, uh, sort of storage primitive in Akka that's what we replicate and and are are able to do projections from and so on but I won't get into even more details here but that's essentially it 
Okay, great. Um, out to the edge and, and the conversation around edge applications. Are there plans for Akka out on the edge and, and at devices in the style of running them on AWS Lambdas? Is there a plan? So, that type so okay, of I'm not sure what that what that means. That, that, that doesn't mean run Akka on the edge in in a serverless manner. Uh, you know, I guess that's that, that that's the question. Uh, 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 if that's the question, yes, you know, we already do already we already do that with Calix, and 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 Calix will run out of, out to the edge very soon. You know, it's something that we haven't got into to to yet. But 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 Calix has has a quite rich component model. You have actions which essentially are AWS lambdas. They are stateless functions. And then you have the entities that are that are that have durable state persisted by the by the, by an event log, and 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 uh, you know soon enough you will be able to run all of that out to the edge fully managed uh, by us. So it will give you a serverless lambda uh, like solution, but with a lot more capabilities than you see in AWS Lambda today. Okay, great. Um... Are there specific databases where active active replication is supported, or in this case, maybe in, we, in, in the current implementation, we require you 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 to run a a a a, 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 a SQL database. You know, so we're we're currently looking into supporting others. We're actually working on supporting others uh, um, more more NoSQL da databases. You know, historically, ACA has been supporting a wide range of persistent storages, including almost every SQL and NoSQL database you would like. Uh, but but you know, we do some some pretty advanced stuff when it comes to the active active replication, and that's something that we that you can't just bolt on to any ACA persistence solution, a classic ACA persistence solution. Which is why we 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 have to tackle the databases one by one by one. But for now, you know everything that that is like or SQL or, or Postgres comp compliant, you know, like RDS and in cloud SQL and all of those things, you know, work well. Uh, but we are currently expanding that, and we'd like to hear from you, you know, uh, what you think is important as well. So, yeah, absolutely. I was just going to add that. A um, couple. Of the, here's a question, and then I got a really interesting one. Um, can we use Scala 3 to develop um, with ACA 2405? Is Scala 3 supported? Yeah, I mean, that 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 that, that shouldn't be a problem. Uh, I mean, let us know if it is, so. Yeah. Um, and then uh, Tyler, this is, it's interesting. We've been talking about this one a little bit internally. Do you see any convergence between ACA futures and blockchain technology? Um. Well, you know, uh, uh, what's interesting is that if you look at the general trend of what's been happening over the past five years, um, uh, what we've seen is that most systems historically were designed in such a way where your data and logic was centralized. Um, and there's actually a hundred billion dollar a year industry around data infrastructure and application infrastructure uh, that is designed around cloud centricity. And what has been steadily happening is we've seen the movement of both your data and your logic um, away from the centricity to be closer to end users. And when you get your data and logic closer to end users, you end up with all sorts of benefits. You get a more predictable latency profile. Um, you get a higher overall throughput because you've had to distribute your data and logic and offload it off the central, the central dependency. And the moment you start to distribute your data closer to your end users, you have to deal with how to uh, consistency issues and replication of it, um, which inherently removes the database or the, the central data infrastructure, if you will, as a resilience problem. So the systems become a lot more reliable um, because they're designed to operate in a decentralized way. And so I think that the um, emergence of solutions like Cloudflare workers, um, Akamai's Edge KV are the systems that are pushing logic and data off to a large number of a CDN endpoints 
um, in order to offload uh, the processing from your centralized applications. And uh, what we're seeing with ACA is we're going to view ACA as a complete application platform that can decentralize any of your data or any of your logic. So it's really the Cloudflare uh, worker model, but for a complete application stack. And um, tying this back to blockchain, uh, you know, blockchain was really the uh, initial uh, architectural type that decentralized your logic and data. And, and there's a lot of benefits that came from this. It was very resilient, but it was incredibly costly uh, because of the way that the, the, the ledger worked and the way that you had to drive consensus. So you required kind of this global consensus. And, and the way that ACA works is that we don't have any of sort of the, the costs associated with, with the system, but you can get complete decentralization. So there, I think there are some parallels there, but, but ACA being a complete application development platform, whereas blockchain was really well suited for um, uh, you know, decentralized contract execution. Great, great. Thanks, Tyler. Um, okay, a couple other questions. Um, uh, actually, uh, somewhat along those lines, is there any use cases um, that are ML related, uh, machine learning or, or artificial intelligence, large language model related? Um, can you speak to that in, in terms of use cases or customer examples? Yeah, we have one customer in India. I, I don't know if we can mention the name or not, but they're doing roughly 2 million um, uh, AI inferences per second on an ACA architecture. Uh, and, and so the, uh, the use case there is that when you are building applications, um, they're usually going to be backed by multiple uh, large, uh, hard to clone and hard to copy models. Uh, those models might be implemented in different languages with different data formats associated with it. And, um, and their ability to offer you know, parallel, parallel inferencing is, is somewhat limited. And so uh, ACA has actually been implemented as a large kind of horizontal scale out inferencing layer um, that provides kind of a consistent response profile to end users and then also handles the the transformations to the various models on the uh, on the back end and also dealing with uh, you know the different language and data formats that exist there as well and so I think they're up to like two million two million inferences per second on on models that can oftentimes take uh, dozens of seconds to you know to comp completely render. Uh, render an inference. Great, great. Okay, good. Next question: um, Is ACA gRPC appropriate to send data record streams? Uh, in other words, from a database from service to service, or might another approach be better than that? I mean, we use ACA. We use ACA gRPC. You know, for for all of our own event replications. I, I think it's a really good. A good uh, tool for the for for that you know but but if you have service to service streaming of events you know I would probably uh, use ACA projections over gRPC then or uh, then you can sort of read directly from from an event stream of this of one service uh, to to always be up to date in another service so to speak I don't know I mean it's hard to to, to speak about specifics without knowing your your use case but uh, but in general I suggest. So. Yeah, and further to that point, if anyone does have more specific um, implementation questions or questions about your particular use of ACA, feel free to reach out on our website and just contact us, and we'll be happy to have a conversation and put you in contact with one of our experts and, and help you out as much as we can, okay? Um, okay, so next question. Um, local persistent storage on edge devices is limited. Are snapshots still the way to keep that event log to size? Yeah, we we in, in Aka Edge Rust, you know, uh, unless I'm, I'm I'm drawing a blank, I don't remember us having any snapshot support. Uh, but uh, you know, please talk to us if you're interested. You know, and, and we, we 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 constantly want to evolve uh, that. You know, it's it's. Uh, it's 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 it, it, it's also meant more like a client, you know. So it it, it more you know, and and shouldn't be seen like a regular Aka, Aka node. But I can still see it being useful. So so yes, uh, let's let's talk about that offline if you're interested, Tamara. Okay, great. 
Um, here's a question um, kind of unrelated to ACA, but uh, more related to Calix actually. So in the ACA library, we had the option to avoid snapshotting. Is it possible in Calix as well, if we have large number of entities with small number of events coming to each, can we just store events instead of storing an updated state with every change? Well, yeah, snap, snapshotting is automatically managed in Calix. Uh, it's nothing that is user facing. So the answer is currently no. We never got a request for someone, at least I know that I'm aware of. I haven't ever heard about it that people want to turn off snapshotting. That is usually a good thing, you know, because it means that you don't have to replay the whole, I mean, all the events since the start of the of the application, which can be years if it runs for a long time, but I can definitely understand that there might be use cases where that could be useful, but currently it's automatic and hidden to the user. Good. Um, while I go through some of, there's quite a few questions still coming in. Um, while we go through those, uh, Tyler, Jonas, do you wanna talk about some of your favorite projects that are using Akka today? Maybe a couple examples other than the one that we talked about just in India. There's so many. I don't know what to choose from. <laughs> yeah, it's hard to pick. <laughs> um, I I think Jonas talking about. Uh, I, I mean, I'm be careful not to mention the the large account names, but I think that the uh, the cloud to IoT, the large scale cloud to IoT implementations are interesting. Um, I think that. Uh, most people don't realize this about ACA, but there's a couple of uh, very large scale customers who use ACA as a uh, replication and synchronization engine. So it's not serving end users, but they uh, propagate state and then converge state across uh, sometimes hundreds of thousands of concurrent nodes that are disconnected across time and space. So it's almost as if it's a um, a, a massively distributed etcd or um, a zookeeper implementation, but they used ACA ACA to achieve that level of consensus. Um, that that's some pretty interesting um, uh, off the shelf usage. Uh, there are uh, a couple of examples of digital twinning. Um, you, you know, so when you think about replicating state at scale, you start getting into uh, large multiplayer uh, concurrent gaming where all the players need to have the same understanding of the uh, gaming environment that all the other players have, but they're not in the same location. And so, so ACA as an engine for uh, facilitating that, um, th that, that kind of gaming environment consensus is an example of that. And, and it also is being used to uh, reflect digital twin in its most, uh, you know, kind of honest interpretation, which is a digital uh, reflection of a, a physical industry environment as well. We have we have some customers who um, are doing this for automotive manufacturing at scale. Yeah, great, great. Thanks, Tyler. Uh, I would also mention that you know there's many large organizations that are using Aka for, to implement multiple different applications in their business. There's also um, dozens and dozens of smaller startup technology driven companies that are really disrupting their markets with new, very uh, interesting applications. Um, we have quite a few case studies actually coming out on some of those customers here in the next few weeks. So I would encourage everybody on this line to, uh, to pay attention to our newsletters and, and social posts about those case studies. And there's also numerous stories out on our website today that you're, uh, that you're welcome to read. Um, a couple other questions. Uh, there's a couple questions around um, our, our actual subscription and what's included in those. I would encourage anyone that has subscription questions to go on our website and, and just fill out a quick contact us. Uh, we'll be happy to have a conversation about your specific questions there. Um, anyone from our, our customer success organization and our sales organization can have that conversation with you. Um, uh, suggestion, I think, for for our engineering team and just our documentation team in terms of having examples of real world projects, just more details on maybe more complex projects instead of more simple ones. Um, sometimes that can be difficult just in terms of, you know, 
making up systems, but anything that a customer would want to uh, suggest as an example. And uh, that's always good to, to add more details to the documentation. So, um, and again, if uh, this, the person that asked about that, if you have questions about if there's a particular application that you're trying to build, feel free to reach out and we'll, uh, we'll have a conversation maybe to help set up that architecture and give you some advice on that. Okay. Um, uh, question came in, as you started moving to Rust with Akka Edge, is there any plan to rewrite Akka fully in Rust to get even more performance and consume less resources, i.e. no need for the Java um, virtual machine? You know, I, I, I don't think we will ever re-implement, re I mean, Akka completely in Rust. You know, that will be a massive undertaking and, 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 uh, uh, but you know, we I, I think we will continue to 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 improve uh, you know our, our existing Rust SDK and 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 see where, you know if if we can use Rust elsewhere. You know, I mean, we're we're very very excited about Rust, as we are with Wasm. You know, which 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 uh, you know. So the, 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 these are things that we're tinkering with, and 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 uh, we'll you know we'll we'll. we'll I will continue to explore, you know. Uh, so, so stay tuned. But you know, but 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 you know, the, I think the best way is to is kind of to dive into to to the current Akka Rust SDK and 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 let us know where you think the limitations are and what we can improve. So so we so we get a list, you know, based on real world feedback uh, from you guys. So what do you think is is necessary? Great. Well, we are right up at the top of the hour. We've actually run a little bit past time. We, we had planned on only keeping all of you for 45 minutes, but there's still many of you on the line here. So if there's any uh, follow-up questions that you have, uh, please feel free to visit our website. Just fill out a quick um, contact us and we'll be happy to put you in contact with either the right technical or the business resources to answer your questions. So um, Tyler, Jonas, Nash, thanks so much for um, presenting the information, for answering all the questions. And uh, with that, I think we're about to wrap up. Let me take a final look at the q and I think we've answered them all. There's a couple there that we answered offline that seem to be more specific to users. I, I think we're all set. Um, Tyler, Jonas, Nash, any parting comments before we wrap up? Thank no, you thank, all you, for thank, you all, thank you all for coming. Great, great to connect with everyone. And uh, we look forward to all the additional innovations and advancements we're going to be making in ACRA for the remainder of this year as well. Good. All right. Yeah. Very good. And, we, and we always love to hear to hear from you guys. So 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 don't hesitate to reach out. You know, I'm on Twitter and, and you can find me elsewhere as well. So you know we, we want to know what what you think about this and, and what you think works and doesn't so we can continue to improve and pushing the envelope. So thanks everyone. All Thank right. you. Thank you. All right.